So Maundy Thursday is a very busy day. There's a lot that happens. Uh, traditionally, uh, well, not traditionally, but what happens on Thursday is we remember Jesus and his disciples uh, share the Last Supper. So they're in the upper room and they have that Last Supper. And afterwards, uh, one of the Gospels tells us that they sing a hymn together. And then they go from there to the Mount of Olives, where Jesus has a conversation with them. And then they go to the Garden of Gethsemane, where uh, Jesus prays and some of the disciples fall asleep. And then uh, that's when the crowds arrive and they arrest Jesus and eventually he is taken to Pilate. It, there's a lot that happens. And so Maundy Thursday is a really important day in the part of Holy Week because there's a couple things that we traditionally do in worship. For starters, we normally would have a communion worship service. Uh, and we would break bread and we would drink uh, from the cup and, and it would be our chance to remember that last supper uh, before Jesus was crucified. Uh, we, because we're not in person, we won't be able to do that today. So I hope you were able to join us for worship on Tuesday. Another thing you normally do on a Monday Thursday service, or you can do, is to do a foot washing. Uh, Monday Thursday was the night when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And so if we were gathering in person, we probably would have had a foot washing station for us to, uh, to remember that uh, and to be a part of that experience. Um, but uh, again, Thursday, Monday Thursday, a lot happens in the story. And um, I just, it, it, I'm so glad that um, you decided to worship with us today because I think it helps make a little bit more sense when we get to Easter. I think we can't get to Easter without going through Thursday and Friday, and I hope that today is an opportunity for you to um, immerse into that a little bit more. So uh, with that said, I'm going to ask my friend Will to read this scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. It comes from Matthew 26, verses 31 through 35. Let's take a listen. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. So this text, like I said earlier, it's a small part of a bigger story, right? Everything that happens, but it's such an important part. And it's a part of the text that I kind of tend to read past a lot of times, but for some reason, I've been wrestling with it and sitting with it a lot. So, so kind of let me unpack what Will just read for us. So uh, after the Last Supper, the, Jesus takes the disciples up to the Mount of Olives, and he's looking at them, and he says, by tomorrow, all of you are going to deny me. By tomorrow, all of you are going to deny me. And Peter, now you have to understand, Peter is uh, very stubborn. I can relate to him a lot. He, he is really stubborn, and, and uh, he probably doesn't like the fact that Jesus is telling him that he will deny him. And so uh, Peter uh, kind of confronts Jesus a little bit, and he says, uh, Jesus, what, what do you mean? I, I'm not going to deny you. Everybody else may deny you, but I won't deny you, Jesus. Everyone else may, but I won't. I can relate to Peter oh so well. Maybe because I'm as stubborn as he is. But I think those words would have hurt a little bit, right? I mean, here's Peter who has been following Jesus and who has uh, sacrificed so much. Here is Peter, and uh, uh, he has seen Jesus perform miracles. He has seen Jesus walk on water. He has seen Jesus feed the masses and preach to the crowds. He has seen Jesus do so much. Peter is sold on Jesus' mission. And here is Jesus saying, Peter, you're going to deny me by tomorrow. And so Jesus, uh, Peter goes up to Jesus and says, everybody else might, but I won't. fall of 2006, it was August of 2016, I mean, 2016, Baton Rouge experienced a, a catastrophic flood. If you lived here, you probably remember it. If you didn't, you have probably heard a lot about it. But in 2016, we had a, uh, a slow-moving storm that kind of sat over Baton Rouge and the surrounding parishes. And in uh, two days, we, it dropped about 20 inches of rain. 
I think the last report I read was uh, that there was about $15 billion of damage done uh, to our city, to our community. And uh, I'll never forget, it wasn't so much the flood that, that I remember, it was what happened after the flood. I remember people everywhere uh, started going out into their communities and helping their neighbors, their coworkers, their friends, their family uh, to gut their homes. I remember uh, every day uh, my routine was get up, come to church, make a plan, go to people's homes, help them cut sheetrock, help them pull up carpet. Uh, I remember the smell of that wet carpet. I still smell it at times. I remember uh, having to have conversations with people about this is just not going to be salvageable. We need to throw it away. I mean, it was, uh, it was a busy season, and, I, and I, it wasn't just me. Everybody out there who lived through that and experienced that had a pretty similar routine. You would get up, you would go to work, or you'd go to someone's house. You'd, gut, you'd help gut homes, you'd help make these homes at least livable. You'd go to sleep, and you'd get up, and you'd do it all over again. And the weekends were probably worse. The weekends you would get up and you would work all day, all weekend. I remember about a month into that, uh, I was on the phone with a friend of mine and I was telling him about what was happening. And and I said, you know, it's so cool to see how our city has mobilized to help one another. But there's something that's annoying me. I said to him, "There, there are people around me, people who I care about and people who I love, who are starting to say stuff like, I'm just getting tired of this. I just don't want to go help this weekend. I just want to spend time with my family. I just want to lay on my couch and relax. I started hearing people say all these things, and I started getting kind of annoyed. And I told my friend on the phone, I was like, it's just so frustrating that, that people want to just rest and relax because there's so much work to do. And I heard my friend take a deep sigh on the phone, and he said, Fernie, you're going to get tired eventually too. Fernie, eventually, you're going to just want a day where you can just sit on your couch. Fernie, eventually, you're going to wear out and you're going to burn out too. I can relate to Peter because just like he responded to Jesus, I responded to my friend. And I said, Eric, no, everybody else may get tired. Everybody else may get burnt out. Everybody else may want to break, but I will never be there. There is way too much work for me to get tired or to get worn out or to want to take a break. Two months after the flood, I remember waking up and I was just tired. I didn't want to go help. I didn't want to cut any more sheetrock. I was tired of the smell of uh, uh, moldy carpet. I just wanted to sit on my couch and watch TV and not think about all the work that needed to be done. Two months after the flood, I hit a wall, and I was done. And suddenly, I started to feel a little bit of guilt. After all, I was the one who said I would never get tired, I would never stop, I would never take a break. And yet, here I found myself, tired and needing a break. Maybe Eric was right. Eventually, I was going to get tired, and eventually, I did. Where are some places in your life where someone has told you that uh, something will eventually happen? If you keep trying to be a perfect parent, eventually you're going to break. If you keep trying to be a perfect this or a perfect that, or if you keep trying to keep that appearance up, eventually it's all going to fall. We've all been told that before, right? Right? And pretty much every time, they're right. You see, I think that's what Peter was going through in our scripture. He, he was standing before Jesus, and Jesus said to him, by tomorrow morning, you're going to deny me. In fact, uh, Jesus says to him, by the time the rooster crows, you would have denied me not just once, but three times, Peter. And Peter is saying, no, Jesus, I'm never going to do that. You see, I think this story is so powerful, especially in this time for each of us. See, I think as as Jesus talks to Peter and says, Peter, by tomorrow morning you would have denied me three times, 
I think what, what Jesus is really saying is, Peter, it's going to be okay. I think what Jesus is saying to Peter is, Peter, by tomorrow morning, you would have denied me three times, but it's going to be okay. See, Jesus never says, Peter, you're going to deny me and my mission is going to be completely wasted. Peter, you're going to deny me and and I'm going to be so disappointed in you. Jesus never says, Peter, you're going to deny me and I'm going to want nothing to do with you. No, Jesus simply uh, looks at Peter and says, you're going to deny me. And he goes about his business. You see, I think what Jesus knows, and he's trying to tell Peter, is that uh, the, the Jesus' uh, resurrection is not dependent on Peter's perfection. Jesus' resurrection is not dependent on Peter's perfection. You see, I think Jesus is looking at Peter and saying, Peter, you're going to fall short, and it's okay. Peter, you're going to mess up, and it's okay. Peter, you're going to make some mistakes, and it's okay because what's about to happen, my resurrection, my journey, my mission, it's not dependent on whether you are perfect or not. You see, I think what Jesus is doing is giving Peter permission to not be perfect. I think what Jesus is doing is telling Peter, even when you fall short and you mess up, it's going to be okay. Jesus' resurrection is not dependent on our perfection. I think that's the message for Peter, and I think that's the message for you and I. And so I want to take a moment here, and I want to ask you, how are you really doing? How many times have you lost your temper? How many times have you gotten frustrated How well are you doing at balancing life uh, and this new way of doing life? Are you a perfect teacher yet? How are your kids doing? Are you making three meals a day? You have all your assignments done? You're not getting frustrated or worried? you're not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall apart. You're going to say things and do things you wish you hadn't. Life is tough. But I want you to know the same good news that Peter is told that night. You're going to deny me, Peter. Fernie, you're going to fall short. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're struggling with, Jesus knows that by tomorrow morning, you will have wished you hadn't said certain things or done certain things or acted a certain way. Jesus knows that by tomorrow morning, you would have uh, uh, not been perfect. But the beautiful thing about journeying towards Easter is that despite our shortcomings and our mistakes, despite our imperfection, Jesus will still overcome death. Jesus will still defeat sin and death. Because Jesus' resurrection is not dependent on your perfection. Everything will be okay. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks. God, I give you thanks that you are so big that this whole uh, world does not require me to be perfect in in order for you to be in control. God, I give you thanks that you take that shoulder, that weight off of our shoulders, and you bear it yourself. But God, this Monday, Thursday, as we uh, prepare to leave this place Remind us, God, that even when we fall short, you are still in control and you are still victorious. God, we give you thanks and we pray this in your most precious and most glorious name. And all God's people said, Amen.